Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Maverick here today with episode 7 of Jujutsu Kaisen. So, a lot happened last episode. We got Itadori back from the dead, uh, but now he's training in secrecy, and so are his classmates as well. They're all training for this big uh, inter-school tournament that's going to happen in a few weeks or a month or something like that. But let's throw all that aside, because today, I think we are going to be focusing on on Gojo. More specifically, how he is going to showcase his powers and how he proves that he is the strongest sorcerer in the lands. So I I don't I really don't want to waste any more time. Let's just get into the episode and hopefully we are gonna have an epic fight. Alright, let's begin in three, two, one, play. Nah, come on, you guys have to start from here! Yeah, 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 we saw this. Come on, move! Move on, drive off! And here we go. Although probably we're gonna have the opening first. It's like... <laughs> he is not impressed. So that means he's pretty high level. Yeah. Oh, really? Hey, hey, hey. And here we go with the opening. Right. I find the one translation to be a little bit off. So, um, you know, the part where, where Gojo asked the, the dude, like, who are you? I think he he was actually a little bit more condescending than that. It uh, the, the exact words he used was more like was more like, what are you? Or what or, you know, what the hell are you? Right, it was more of a condescending tone than anything. I feel like translating as "Who are you?" doesn't really carry the same weight as a, uh, you know, as the original Japanese. I wonder if that guy that uh, Itadori is laughing with is going to play an important role later. They gave him very important screen time, so you can typically find some hits and whatnot from the opening. Woof. Mm. Eh. 
he's still like, nice try. I think, uh, woof. Nice. <laughs> this dude. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> this dude! He's just playing him. Oh my god. <laughs> what the hell is this? Oh, okay, I kind of have, I'm a little bit afraid that the background music is going to get copyright struck, huh? So. <laughs> I think his theme song should be Can't Touch This. <laughs> Hmm? <laughs> He's using this as a teaching experience at the same time. <laughs> Wait, did he literally like go back, do all this, and then <laughs> this dude? Oh wait, they're watching Lord of the Rings! <laughs> oh. Mm, nice. Yeah, he literally... He literally had the time to go back. 
talk to him and bring him there. Oh my god, this dude. This dude. <laughs> oh my god I love this dude so much <laughs> this is exactly what he wants. So basically, all these curses, or at least special grade curses, their domain is essentially some place that they can pull themselves into, where I assume they are the, you know, the master of their domain, theoretically speaking. He's literally itching her right now. <laughs> yeah, environment to buffs. Okay, guaranteed to hit? Okay. Yeah, come on, make this interesting, dude. So he's going to unleash his own domain. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 
Literally the the galaxy. The universe. <laughs> Is that supposed to be like a Yeah, your domain was overwhelmed. I think that's supposed to be an eye. But it looks kind of like a death hole, uh, like a black hole as well. Infinite amount of times. Just taking his head off. Pro <laughs> Literally taking his head. Kill him. <laughs> oh. Hmm. This is this a domain expansion as well? Gojo actually got stopped for a second there. In a few seconds there. Don't worry, none of us knew. <laughs> Oh yeah, he never even actually explained this to him. <laughs> he completely forgot about it. <laughs> that 
And that looks like a door I want anywhere door. You were the one who decided to go, you know. Hmm. On Halloween, eh? I guess this is a hybrid human curse. Damn, that was nice. Alright. Uh, although I love the ending, I'm gonna skip, skip forward to the uh, Jujutsu Scroll part. So, see you guys in a second. Alright, let's watch the Jujutsu Scroll in 3, 2, 1, play. Acrobat. <laughs> For what? Swimming? Surfing? Oh! <laughs> Although I think it would have been a little bit more apt if they were playing volleyball instead. Like beach. <laughs> like beach volleyball. Oh. Yep. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Go. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, oh, see you guys after this. You can't touch this. Oh man, guys, that was awesome. That was great. Everything I wanted from Gojo, he did here. Like, the smugness that he had, the overwhelming power, right? The, the, cons the uh, condescending tone to the curses and whatnot. That, 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 like, ah, doesn't matter because you're weak. Oh man, I love that. Uh, so, he actually does have the power to back this up, right? We can clearly see why he calls himself the strongest, why he um, he absolutely thinks that he can beat Sukuna as well. You know, there He is making a very compelling argument for himself, right? Um, the, the only thing, the only thing I would kind of say uh, took me out of it a little bit is when he actually, you know, start, uh, used his own domain by taking off his blind foot, right? His eyes are... I think not quite what I expect from him, but I guess that's part of the charm, right? The, the sort of gap difference between how how normal, how uh, normally how refined and cool he looks versus the eyes that look more like I don't know something from out of a show, uh, a shojo or something like that, a shojo manga, um, that kind of stuff, right? But in any case, uh, that was awesome. His abilities was awesome, and I love that he actually took the time to you know go back. Get Itadori and, you know, not even just get him, right? It wasn't like a case where he just went back and said, come with me, and then instantly yank him out of here. He actually took the time to talk with Itadori and, uh, you know, even had some back and forth between him as well, and then t brought him all the way there uh, just in time to continue the battle, right? Uh, the cheekiness of this dude. I love cheeky characters, so this was, you know, this was, mwah, I, I love this. Um, 
And beyond that, we do, we are also introduced to some pretty interesting mechanics as well, right? Particularly in the sort of domain expansion part. So we've known about domains for quite a while now. Uh, we've seen it from Sukuna, we've seen it from the special grade uh, back in the detention center and whatnot. But I think this, this is the first time where somebody actually explained what this is. And it also gives us a little bit of a hint as to how fights are going to go in the future, right? Now, I think, you know, this one, in, in this episode, it's, it's kind of like, um, we don't, we can't really see anything, right? Because Gojo is uh, too overwhelmingly powerful. He completely broke through the the uh, the curses um, domain. So you no, know, that was that, right? We didn't really get to see too much of it. However, consider a situation where the two are more evenly matched, right? Uh, if if a cur if well, let's say two sorcerers or a sorcerer and a curse uh, are evenly matched in terms of their curse powers and whatnot. So what would happen then? I have a feeling that this is probably going to form the basis of many of the future fights instead, uh, and then we can sort of see what happens when two people of about equal amount of cursed energy both expand their domains at the same time and, um, and then clash with each other, right? Are we going to get some really, really unique... Uh, how can I say it? Some really unique geological features and, and some, some really unique techniques that go on whilst fighting in this sort of semi, you know, sort of like battling for control of the environment, battling for control of the domain, right? I think it's actually a pretty clever way to, to, um, to, to sort out the battles, actually, because you're essentially saying that you can create your own battlefield, you can uh, create your own battlegrounds, so you're not limited to what we can see in the normal world, right? Like like uh, an empty field, some grasslands, a forest, some roads, or, or things of that nature. Instead, you can literally use your domain to make it any kind of environment that you want, and that's going to provide a lot of unique background and a lot of unique backdrops to where the fights can take place, and then very unique uh, environmental features that they can utilize as well. So, I mean, this is just, you know, this is just a guess, right? Obviously, I don't exactly know what's going to happen in the future, but I have a feeling that this is probably, since they took the time to explain this, this is probably going to be very important going forward, um, and probably we'll, we'll learn more about that once we get into a, an actual fight that's not so overwhelmingly one-sided. So we got that as well, and then obviously we have the um, the the sort of plot development as well with in regards to the curses, right? Or the human curse alliance. Indeed, that that guy at the very end there, I feel like he is probably a representation of humans fusing with curses, right? So probably not not quite completely a human, but not quite completely a curse either. So that's also going to be something pretty interesting going forward. Uh, how you know what kind of plan they're trying to pull off on Halloween? How exactly are they going to seal Gojo? Who was one of the strongest sorcerers ever and we can clearly see that he had he had very much to spare right he was not touched not harmed in the slightest uh in this episode well well except for one part right he was vulnerable for about you know two or three seconds when he got hit by the uh the spell the curse of, of the flowers and whatnot and he kind of lost his will to fight for a little while he instantly snapped out of it but consider um you know if some if one of the enemies had actually utilized that opportunity to to actually attack him or whatnot hey who knows maybe he will actually be in trouble although actually now that i think about it Maybe not, maybe not, right? Because at that time he wasn't in another person's domain, right? So even if he fell under the control of that at that time, uh, if his you know infinity ability is um is, is sort of like a passive ability, it's it's always there, right? Then maybe that wouldn't really count as a um as an a vulnerability of his as well. But if that were the case, right? If if his like infinity sort of um sort of curse or or whatever the hell that that uh, stems from is active twenty four seven, then this dude is almost literally invincible, right? Unless you do pull him into your own domain, but then in which case he's just gonna overwhelm you with his domain as well. So it'll be interesting to see how exactly they find a way to to seal him as well. But I guess in the meantime, well, we can just enjoy you know what we saw today with Gojo having the um you know I, I mean, I just love cheeky characters. That That's all I can say. So I'm sure there are probably some people who are going to be like, oh, Gojo is too strong. He's too overwhelmingly powerful, blah, blah, blah. How, how can we actually have tension that way? Dude, I don't care. <laughs> this is this is great, right? I want to see someone like Gojo beat up beat up uh, everyone else. And especially someone who is you know, not, not exactly overfilled with, with a sense of duty or justice or anything, but just, you know, or, or he can have it, but he also uh, is, is straight restrained enough to be cool about it as well. So, 
uh, definitely my favorite character <laughs> right now from this show, which I guess isn't really that uh, that uh, of a controversial thing to say. I'm sure that Gojo is probably a favorite character for many people as well. But in any case, that's it for episode 7 of Jujutsu Kaisen. Thank you guys. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.